Hello, hello. Good afternoon, everyone. This is Teacher Raisa. It is so good to be back. I hope that we had a wonderful time um, with the Feast of the Ram, which is Tabaski. And now we are back on life. So today we're going to go through something a little bit different, more like grammar, okay? And we'll be looking at um, figurative language. What is a figurative language? It comes from figure, um, that you're trying to express something. It is something that is like non-literal, that you're trying to express. You're trying to say something. You're trying to make a point about something. But yet, um, you're using different examples. You're using like a different um, perspective or words to try to describe. Okay, for example, it's raining cats and dogs. That right there tells you it's not cats and dogs are not falling, you know, but that it's raining heavily. And so we're going to look at some of the different, there are actually nine figurative languages, okay, but we're going to look at, today we're going to be looking at seven of them. I think you've seen them as we go along. It's very, very helpful when you're talking to describe something or describe a situation or even in your writing trying to describe or trying to talk about something that has happened before and figurative languages is often sometimes when it's about comparison you're comparing two things as being similar you're comparing two things as being different or you're trying to express the gravity of something or you're trying to pass a point that's figurative language, okay? And so um, on the board right here, we have seven, like I said. So we're gonna start off with hyperbole. It's pronounced hyper, but he bear, hyper, and then ball. So it's a hyperbole. Hyper already tells you that it's quelque chose qui est élevé, something that is high, you know, something that is um, more serious for example so a hyperbole tells you about trying to exaggerate you want to give you want to describe an event or describe something and exaggerate on it you want and sometimes it could be how serious the situation or that person is so you use a hyperbole to exaggerate in order to make a point so remember that you're trying to pass on a message and you want that message that people know that, understand that that message is either serious, but you're exaggerating as far as it is. For example, he was dying of boredom. Boredom, c'est um, être ennuyé. So he was dying of boredom. Une façon de dire que uh, vraiment, je m'ennuie d'une telle, uh, un degré que je peux même pas expliquer. So you say he's dying. I'm dying of boredom. So I, I, I'm really bored. I have absolutely nothing to do, nothing to, you know, to say or activity or whatever it is. So I'm dying of boredom. I could eat a horse right now. That tells you exaggerating means that tells you how seriously you're hungry. La gravité de la famine. Ça veut dire que tu es tellement, tellement, tu es tellement, tellement faim. So you say, oh, I could eat a horse right now. I know. The horse is cheval. So it's just a way of exaggerating in order to make a point that I'm extremely, I'm famished. Actually, that would mean that you're famished. If someone says I'm famished, it means that um, you're extremely hungry. Tu as tellement, tu as tellement, uh, uh, comment dirais-je, faim que tu peux même pas décrire. So it's, you know, I could eat a horse. You see how you've exaggerated it? So that's an example, okay? And then what is an idom? It's pronounced idom, okay? Idom, um, as you can see, idom is often, you know, I say it, it only makes sense when used figuratively and not literally. Idom is something that, it's just like uh, um, trying to say something but in the form of a narration. You know, and so it only makes sense when it's used figuratively, in the sense that when it is used to describe, tu vas annoncer quelque chose, voilà, ou bien tu veux dire passer, passer un message, et que uh, it has like ideas in it, so it's not literally, c'est pas mot à mot. For example, I heard the, the news from the horse's mouth. Horse, encore, c'est che, cheval. So you heard the news, tu as entendu la nouvelle, and the horse's mouth, le cheval ne parle pas. 
Alors c'est juste figurative, ça remplace juste la personne. And when you talk about the horse's mouth, horse's mouth, ça signifie la personne même, le concernant, ou bien la concernée. C'est pas deuxième, troisième personne. So that's what you call the horse's mouth. I heard the news, j'ai entendu la nouvelle. La personne, j'ai reçu cette nouvelle. C'est pas troisième, quatrième, c'est pas une rumeur. C'est vraiment le, le concerné, ou bien la concernante. C'est vraiment le concerné qui m'a donné. That's a horse's mouth. You say it is figurative. And you, you will not say, I heard it from the source, la source. You know, it's a way of saying, I heard the, I heard the news from the source. So it's figurative. Ça so remplace. You know, the another way is stop beating a dead horse. Je sais, il y a beaucoup de cheval. I know. Stop beating a dead horse. C'est une façon de dire arrête de tout le temps de t'acharner sur le même problème, les mêmes personnes, la même personne, la même personne. Ça ne change rien. C'est voilà, la personne euh, est gâtée, est foutue. Euh, voilà, on peut rien y faire. So you're trying to give up on someone. A dead horse. C'est pas nécessairement un cheval qui est décédé, qui est mort. That's dead. But it's just a way of saying that. Pourquoi tu te tracasses tellement sur quelqu'un ou sur quelque chose qui n'aboutira pas à quelque chose, qui n'aboutira à rien. That's the meaning of stop beating yourself. Stop beating yourself. You know that this friend, il est comme ça. You know that this girl, elle est comme ça. À chaque fois, tu te plains, tu te plains, tu te plains. It is beating a dead horse. So stop beating a dead horse. Okay? So that is an idom. So idom, ça remplace littéralement l'idée. Ça remplace. That's why it is figurative. That is why it's just a figure. C'est quelque chose qui remplace vraiment l'idée que tu veux passer. It's figurative, literally. So it's just figurative. Stop beating a dead horse. Or you can hear someone say, stop beating about the bush. Beating about... Beating about the bush. To stop beating about the bush. Beating about the bush, ça signifie que pourquoi tu fais de ron ron, tu parles de ron ron ron. Directement au but, just go straight to the point. What do you want to say? I don't like you, I like you, I don't like your work, tu es viré, you're fired. What do you want to say? Why are you going around to say, um, tu sais que, y a pas, and all that. That is beating about the bush. So it's an item. Bush, c'est un buisson. Forêt, whatever it is. But why do you say pas que you're going to pas dans un buisson et tu fais des gauches à droite? No, c'est juste que tu pas directement just go straight to the point. Tell me what you have to say. Why are you dragging? That is an item. So you see, it's a figurative speech. It's not direct. So it's why are you beating about the bush? So I hope that you're getting those ideas so that you would know every time that you want to say vous voulez passer un message mais que vous tournez ou vous fassez ou vous le dites d'une façon euh, je sais pas euh, façon un peu différente pas vraiment direct that is an item it replaces it beating about the bush and then this is a c me li le e the e is pronounced as e it is not similé it is not simile It is not smile, it's a simili. The L is pronounced as an I. The E, I'm sorry, is pronounced as an I. So a simile. What is a simile? Simili, le mot, you have simili. Ça vient de similar. Quelque chose semblable à. It comes from similar. Simili, it's comparing two things using as or like. Simple. You're trying to compare two situations. You're trying to compare, you know, like two different objects, two different scenarios. But one thing that comes together is that you're using like, come, as, come. Like, say, come. So, for example, I'm as busy as a bee. Bee, c'est l'abeille. Vous savez, l'abeille est active, sont active. So, if I say, oh, uh, Raisa, can you, um, what are you doing tonight? Would you want to come for a cup of tea? Let's go dancing, blah, blah, blah. You know, oh, I'm sorry, I'm so busy. I'm as busy as a bee. Je suis tellement, tellement busy, tellement prise comme uh, l'abeille. So, busy as a bee. You see that I, pronom personnel, be. Another one. You're comparing these two using as. As. For example, she's as stubborn as a donkey. Donkey, c'est l'âne. So she's as stubborn. Elle est tellement têtue comme euh, l'âne, l'âne, you know. So she's as stubborn. So that is a simile because you've used as. 
you just like. The child is as brave as a lion. De choses. You're using two things, two attributes, deux attributs pour comparer en utilisant as or like. She is as, or the child is as brave, brave, comme un lion. As. C'est pour te dire que la personne est tellement a tellement de rigueur, a tellement de, de, you know, it's not afraid, n'a pas peur, you know, that's the same thing. But this one, busy as it be, ça te donne une idée de, euh, de, de, te donne une idée de la manière en laquelle euh, je suis prise, que j'ai trop à faire. Ça te donne vraiment une idée que, oh non, je peux pas. I'm as busy as, oh, I am as tired, you know, or, you know, so it gives you an idea. So similes. Um, and there are lots of examples out there. She's as big as a lorry. C'est-à-dire, la personne est tellement grosse ou, je sais pas, comme un uh, camion. Gives you an idea. You know, it's as heavy as a log of wood. C'est tellement, ça s'apaise comme uh, du bois ou, uh, voilà. So it just depends as or like is a simile. Remember, a simile, you're comparing two likely things. Deux choses différentes. Too unlikely. C'est pas likely. Take note. Too unlikely. You have humain and you have lion. So the two unlikely things that you're comparing them. Trying to give so that the person and so that using like or as is important. So moving on, we have symbolism. Symbolism. Symbolism comes from symbol. What do you understand by symbol? It's a symbol. Symbol, ce sont les signes, ce sont les objets. You know, par exemple, if you see this, you will know what that means. Un symbol, ça représente de quoi? What does that represent? So symbolism, it comes from symbol, something that you know when you see, you know, trying to compare. But in this language, it's using an object. <laughs>